Hi everyone, this is Dee, and today I'm going to tell you how you can have a Mac with a good specification running on your Windows PC, Linux PC, Chromebook, or even an older Mac for just one dollar. This is no gimmick or trick, it's as simple as running a browser on almost any device with a stable internet connection. If you need a Mac to run specific software or even develop apps and games, this could be the solution for you without buying an actual Mac. You can also use this to download free and paid apps from the App Store. This saved me a ton of money when I had to find a solution for my book formatting software that only runs on a Mac. But boy, those things ain't cheap. And when I stumbled across a company called Mac in Cloud, I was over the moon to find a solution to this problem. You'll find the link to them in the description below. Now I'm not flush and I can't be spending top dollar on luxuries, particularly to access a piece of software that I only use a few times each week. So their basic pay-as-you-go plan suited me just fine. Here's their plan page, which gives a little more information. There are lots of different plans to choose from. With more costs comes more controls, such as managed servers and root access. I personally don't need those, so I stuck with the basic pay-as-you-go plan, and that has worked just fine for me. I paid them $30, and they gave me 30 hours of time to use a Mac. Some features of my Mac are, it's a physical Mac server, not a virtual machine. It has a Core i7 CPU. It has 8 gig of memory, which is upgradable. All major cloud storage apps available, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, Google Drive, etc. And you can bring your own software license too. Now for $1 per hour, I think that's pretty decent. Remember this is remote access to an actual Mac, not a virtual machine. One important point about the 30 hours access, Mac and Cloud will round your time used for that day up to the nearest hour. So if you log in three times in a day for 10 minutes each time, that's 30 minutes of usage for that day. That will be rounded up to one hours of usage. Also, if you don't log in for 60 days, they'll delete your Mac and you could lose your work. So there is clearly a push by the company to have you logging in at least once every 59 days or thereabouts, which I'm guessing you would anyway, as you wouldn't sign up to Mac and Cloud unless you plan to use it. I don't believe there's any long-term contract here. You just buy the access that you need. The performance of my Mac has been adequate for my needs, but doesn't feel as zippy as a real Mac would. But I can live with that. It works for the applications I need, and I'm on their most basic plan anyway. For more money and with higher plans, you'll get more bang for your buck such as better CPU, more memory and more storage. Once logged into the desktop, you'll see that it just looks like the desktop of an Apple Mac with all of the software that you'd expect to find and any software that you choose to install or choose to use. There is absolutely no difference. You'll see that I'm actually running this on top of my Windows desktop. I'll just open the iTunes store so you can see that it opens pretty quick. If you log in, you'll see everything you expect to see. One thing you must do is log out correctly. If you just shut the browser down and don't log out, you may appear still logged in on their server and this will count against you time-wise. Once I signed up, I received a zipped folder with various connections, 4K connections, low graphics, medium and high graphics, sound enabled, or just some standard connections, which are the ones I use at various resolutions. I actually use the 1920 by 1080. That works really well for me. So there you go, that's Mac in Cloud. I hope you found that useful. I find it extremely useful for accessing occasional applications that I need a Mac for without the financial outlay of buying a physical Mac. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more tips, then please consider subscribing. And if you have any comments about this, if you have any experience of uh, these cloud-based Mac servers, then please leave a comment below. I hope to catch you soon.